Hello everyone, just doing a deep dive stocks here, and today we're going to be doing a deep dive into Bed Bath and Beyond. Specifically, I was asked after posting this tweet up on Twitter about Bed Bath and Beyond's hedging requirements, what that meant for the stock, and what we can expect in the future. Now, these are all really good ideas, so I figured I would take a few minutes today to look at the data and see how does Bed Bath and Beyond typically behave in these extreme hedging environments. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. A quick recap, Bed Bath & Beyond has risen about 160% over the past week or so, with a starting value of $4 or no, $1.58 and at the time of recording, a value of $4.11. That is quite a substantial increase on a stock over the past only handful of days. The large increase in price was also accompanied by a substantially large increase in volatility, and together this created a hedging amount on Friday that was 68 million shares that would have to be purchased by the options dealers in order to hedge all of the options that are currently on Bed Bath & Beyond. Now we can see that with an average volume of about 50 million shares per day over the past month or so, that a $68 million share hedging requirement that was produced in a single day is pretty substantial for any stock, let alone Bed Bath & Beyond. So in today's video, let's take a quick look at the data from a deep dive stock stock report, and then let's start digging into the data to see how Bed Bath & Beyond typically behaves when it has large hedging requirements. As usual, our first stop is going to be Vorex, and here we see Vorex has essentially spiked. You'll notice that Vorex started its run up a few days prior to the price appreciation, and this is pretty in line with the previous episodes of Bed Bath & Beyond rising very quickly and by a large amount. However, you'll also notice that Vorex has completed its spike. In other words, Vorex has dipped down. This is pretty this is a pretty indicative sign that the rally has unfortunately already ended, as whenever Vorex abruptly changes its direction like that or completes a Vorex spike, that indicates that the price movement is now ending its reign and we can expect a reversion back to where the price was originally. Next up is the Gamma Hedging Heat Map, and we see here that it is pretty unusual, which may not be too surprising. But we see that the entire top half of the map has a very faint blue indicating purchasing support, but we it's kind of the same shade, it doesn't change much, and the selling pressure that is located spot down is very nicely placed at $1. With such a substantial increase in price and volatility that occurred over the past few days, this type of hedging heat map orientation isn't too unreasonable as it shows us that the hedging environment is very disrupted currently. And it is precisely this disrupted hedging heat map that has led us to a 68,538,597 share hedging requirement that was produced on Friday. And the main driving force behind this hedging requirement was the large increase in volatility, with a change of 2.4 to 3.45, that is over a 100 point increase in volatility. And if we scoot over to the hedging heat map, we see that whenever volatility increases, shares have to be purchased. One point increase in price and volatility gives us a 528,000 share hedging requirement in the purchasing direction. So with such a large change in volatility, this occurred a very substantially large hedging requirement that the options dealers will now have to deal with. And that's what led us to the conversation about what does this mean for Bed Bath & Beyond and could we derive any additional information from this. In order to do this, I looked at Bed Bath & Beyond's hedging requirements from October of 2020 until Friday. And then once I had those hedging amounts, I looked at the how those hedging amounts relate to the close, the dark pool data, volatility, liquidity dependent price metrics derived volatility, shorting behavior, and that's it. Volatility, dark pool, LDPM, shorting, and volume. And I wanted to see if the change in the hedging amount or the hedging environment had a discernible impact on the behavior of these activities on Bed Bath & Beyond. And in order to compare these values, I took the hedging amount and then the change in the values for a two-date settlement um, expectation, so a T plus two, 
and I wanted to see if there was any relationship that could be parsed out. Now, small disclaimer, these types of behaviors in the market are pretty complex and they are they interact and influence each other in some pretty non-standard and non-linear ways. But for this quick investigations, we are just going to use some generalized linear models to look at the relationship between these two variables or hedging amount and the various variables that we are going to look at here in this quick data investigation. So the first one that I thought would be obvious to look at is the change in the hedging amount and how does the price change for the future in a T plus two sediment date. And here we see that as the hedging amount increases, paradoxically, the amount or the change in Bed Bath & Beyond's price decreases. This was odd, right? You would expect that a hedging amount increase, so if there's a larger amount of purchasing requirements from the options dealers, that there would be a increase in the price of the stock, especially as that amount of hedging increases. So this presented us already with our first mystery. Why does the, an increase in hedging amount infer a decrease in the price over the next T plus two or three trading days? My first investigation after the close was then to look at the dark pool purchasing behavior. Perhaps the options dealers are routing their purchasing or hedging requirements through the dark pool. If this is true, then we should see that as the hedging amount increases, that the dark pool activity increases over the next three days as well. And that is exactly what we see here with a pretty strong association. So as the amount of hedging increases, we see that there is a direct relationship with the percent, the average daily percent change over the next T plus two days or two sediment days for the amount of purchasing that occurs in the dark pool. So this does provide some evidence that the options dealers are hedging through the dark pool, which wouldn't necessarily affect the price of the asset or the underlying asset immediately. And to help explain this process, if you haven't, I definitely recommend reading the squeeze metrics. The short is long. It outlines the way that the dark pools and the market makers will short equities to large institutions and then go to the lit market and eventually purchase those shares back. So this still doesn't quite answer the question of why is there a decrease in price as we see an increase in the hedging amount, even though the options dealers are routing their hedging, their hedging through the dark pools, because we would still expect that the dark pools would eventually turn around and repurchase those shares that they shorted to the institutions from the lit market. So then the next thing I was curious about was if there was a change in the lit volume per hedging amount. And we can see here that the answer is mostly no. The change in the lit volume doesn't really change drastically in a average daily change perspective, depending on the amount of hedging required on Bed Bath & Beyond. This reinforces the idea that the majority of hedging is probably routed through the dark pool and won't have a substantial impact on the price of the equity in a T plus two regime. Unfortunately, we don't have the data on when the dark pools themselves will have to go to the lit market to repurchase those shares. However, I was still interested in the liquidity profile on Bed Bath & Beyond during these hedging amount fluctuations. And so I looked at volatility or IV30, the implied volatility, as well as the volatility derived from LDPM. And here we see that in both cases, the volatility increases. In other words, liquidity decreases as the hedging amounts increase. This is a curious aspect. When we can identify a source of share requirements such as hedging and then we can also monitor the liquidity on a stock we should see that as shares are being purchased and shares are being sold in a liquid stock volatility doesn't change much however if a stock has difficulty locating shares to either purchase or sell then we start seeing changes in the liquidity profile which is exactly what we see here when we look at the change in the implied volatility and the change in ldpm's derived volatility metrics as the hedging amount changes. As the hedging amount increase, we see that from both perspectives, liquidity drastically decreases. Implied volatility increases pretty substantially, as does the LDPM derived volatility. And what's also curious is we see that as hedging amounts decrease, liquidity improves. So as options dealers provide shares to the market, liquidity improves on Bed Bath & Beyond, indicating that there is a probably a little bit of a share shortage such that when the options dealers provide their shares to the market, we now finally have the liquidity necessary to have a smoothly running equity. However, when that liquidity is gone, things aren't running smoothly, volatilities rise, and that seems to be partially explained by as the options dealers become more inundated with purchasing amounts 
they switch to the dark pool. However, this is where things get complicated. Are they switching to the dark pool in order to satisfy their hedging amounts because there's no liquidity? Or are they the ones that are siphoning liquidity by proxy by turning their bags from the lit market to the dark pool? Unfortunately, it's not easy to say. All we can do here is describe some of the relationships between these two different or between these data and these behaviors. So what we have currently is we can identify the hedging amount and that when it increases, there is a subsequent increase in the dark pool purchasing behavior, which should theoretically make the market makers then turn to the lip market and eventually purchase those shares, which may be difficult because there does also seem to be an association with liquidity and the hedging amount and the amount of behavior or purchasing support occurring in the dark markets. So this is a pretty messy situation. But nonetheless, we still don't have an adequate answer as to why the price should drop. If anything, we should still expect the price to increase, either directly through the amount of hedging that has to occur through the options dealers or the eventual purchasing of the shares by the market makers themselves. So the last thing I looked at was shorting. I wanted to know if shorting or the behavior, essentially does the behavior of shorting change at all in this situation? And when we look at shorting, we see that that is indeed the case as the hedging amounts increase. And we see that as the hedging amount increases, so too does the shorting. However, that still doesn't answer all of our questions. And if anything, this describes or at least highlights how dynamic and convoluted the relationship in hedging amount, dark pool behavior, liquidity, and ultimately an equities price really is. So a general schematic that I have in my head or one that I think generalizes this relationship is that as the hedging amounts increase with the poor liquidity on Bed Bath & Beyond already, the options dealers turn towards the dark pool to fulfill their hedging requirements, but those hedging requirements are naturally given back to the market over time. But those hedging requirements are naturally given back to the market over time, and I assume in a pretty aggressive manner, given that Bed Bath & Beyond has a substantially high volatility. Hedging is typically done more aggressive on stocks that have quote unquote, more or less instability, mainly more instability. And given how dynamic Bed Bath & Beyond is, I think that this hedging amount is then quickly given back to the market and on top of a increase in shorting, ultimately driving the price down, which then would unravel more hedging requirements that were cured, causing more shares to be sold back to the market. And this pushes the stock down in a pretty paradoxical manner. So even if the market makers come back later and repurchase their shares, the options dealers seem to be selling the shares back to the market that they obtained by purchasing them from the market makers in order to satisfy their hedging requirements. And paradoxically, this pushes the price lower, which does help with unraveling more hedging amounts, right? So that's all I have for you guys today in terms of Bed Bath & Beyond and its pretty obscene hedging amounts. This is, like I said, just a cursory look into the relationship between some pretty powerful dynamics in the market, and they can be pretty complex. Nonetheless, I think it's a pretty interesting insight, especially seeing very clearly that as a hedging amount increases, so too does the dark pool purchasing behavior, which ultimately is a nexus to a lot of very differential activities that are dependent on one another, and it makes for a pretty exciting time. Nonetheless, what does this mean for us today? Well, unfortunately, it does suggest that as the hedging amount increases or as it did on Friday, the ultimate response from the market is going to be a lower price on Bed Bath & Beyond. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoy this type of data or data analysis, feel free to like it and subscribe. My name is Justin, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.